Truly, we live in an information age with multiple platforms and multiple sources. And the challenge of this era is how to focus on quality, not just quantity, knowledge, not just information, raising the standards of journalism while embracing technology. That is the battle on the front lines that our thought leaders for today is focusing on. Let's meet Sandy Prieto Romualdez, the CEO of the Inquirer Group of Companies. You studied sociology at Notre Dame. Tell us about that lo lovely field and how this really formed your mindset and approach to life. When I was in um, high school, I went to Assumption and, and they have, uh, in each year, they have a, um, a nun that sort of like uh, is your, you know, guides you. And one of them um, who I, I can say was really my, 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 my mentor plucked me out and she said, what are you doing this um, weekend? You know, there's going to be a student council um, seminar, and and uh, maybe you'd like to to see if it's something that that you could um, you could do. So I said, okay, I have nothing to do this this Saturday. So I made it. I made it there, but just as an as assistant position. And that summer um, changed my life. Her approach to a leadership training was really basically an exposure. We were just in a in a community of in Rizal, and um, you know we lived quite a sheltered life. You know, you you just go from school to the, you know your training. So that really started to open open my eyes, and and she didn't let go uh, in terms of my formation uh, from then. And so I was really caught up in that idea that um, you know my own transformation and, and wanting to do something. Um, you know, to make it to make it to make a difference. I, I know it, it sounds so. Um, uh, you know, at that time th there was really a a call for 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 me to do something. Um, I actually thought I was gonna be a nun mm. <laughs> in the beginning. You want to the vocation went as yes, far as that. Um, and uh, um, you know, when I went through a one week, you know, silent uh, retreat, and in the, in the end of it, uh, I was talking to a spiritual advisor. And he says, uh, "I think there's other ways to serve the the, the, the churches." So it's 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 really more being able to um, to have great sensitivity ab about you know um, other other people and, and communities. So that's really what drew me to to taking up sociology. You had a very deep process of discernment, as you just shared with me. And interesting enough, the environment in Notre Dame, you are ha able to have that nexus between spirituality and social justice with sociology as a platform. Tell us about how that all came together in your undergraduate degree and also in your exposure to other countries, especially with your outreach. When I was in, in college, you kind of like had to choose, are you good? <laughs> And, and so you're to be in community development, sociology, or are you evil and, and you have to be in your own business? So you had the dichotomy at that yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very strong in me was, again, that, 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 that sense of that, that social mission. And so it started off, I, I took my first year in UST, second year in UP, and then I, and then I moved to, to Notre Dame. Again, what I'm, what I'm loving about the way um, my undergrad you know, um, choices went is that I, I was able to to get the best experience of, of each college. But when I went to Notre Dame, um, there I was, I was feeling I was in a first world country and I said, you know, okay, what, 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 uh, what, what am I doing here? You know, I mean, I, I, I um, of course, was, was thankful for the, for the education. But there was, again, um, was something in me that, yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was searching, you know, for, for something, something more, something else. And I saw a poster that said study abroad program. And there were to many different places. There was to, well, you know, countries. There was to Japan, Switzerland, Germany. But what jumped out at me was Kenya, Africa. Why an underdeveloped country like Kenya? I always want to learn and experience um, just what um, the different cultures are, and, and particularly in, in underdeveloped um, countries, uh, because it, it's sort of like it's, it's pure. It was such a life-changing experience. I, I can, I can, you know, every not a week goes by, and that and that was already about twenty years ago, um, where I don't 
you know, think about uh, uh, something I, I did when I was there. I was there for six months, um, and the, the way the school is designed is you, it's like a traveling school. You go to different, um, uh, different places. And so the first one we went, they were going through a very bad drought. So we joined and, and, um, and had a work camp. Uh, we were only allowed to, to live off the day with one bucket of, of, of water. So it was quite an experience. Uh, um, being able to to have that type of yeah, you know, to, to live be able to live to, to, means, to yeah. live with those very limited means and again it 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 I couldn't just I can't just say that it's like actual schooling but it it's also with the transformation that that happened in in, in me being able to 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 live and, and be able you're forced to you're forced to really look within and and, and really say who are you and vis-a-vis -vis -vis the community and that you're and the respect that that you give that community so we also had a lot of um, homestays while we were there. So we, we lived again we, when we were in the fisherman village and in, in the urban. And again, looking at what they're going through in life also and, and what, you know, government provides, what, 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 what um, they, can, they can do for themselves, opportunities. And, and uh, so that, that was really very, very powerful an experience for me. At some point, uh, it was weighing heavy on the business. You know, a lot of people were saying, you know, why don't you just apologize? I said, um, if we apologize, it, it would be a point of no return. How did you find your way back home? And you mentioned coming into the Enquirer as an accidental occurrence. Tell us about how that all came together. It's sort of like uh, the calling was, was there and said that um, I'd, I'd like to come back and, and be able to see how else I can, um, uh, you know, con how can I, I can contribute in my very, 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 very small, small way. And um, so I, I went back. Um, at that time, my, my uh, mentor, she said, how about we, we try to put up a program that, that what you went through in assumption and you could replicate that. it also yes. there. Um, so we did two things. We put up something called uh, um, community development, uh, a short course, and the other one we, we were helping design that for the college. I realized that um, the way I wanted to, to contribute, I wanted to put more science into you know you can't just have a have a big heart and you know you, you sort of also the structure. Of yes, it, right? the structure exactly. I wanted to be able to find a way that how can I channel. So when I went to, um, when I went there, there was a fantastic course in AIM called um, Masters in Development Management, which again is, is, is what I was looking for, it was the combination. In fact, our, our first uh, class, um, the, the professor said, first of all, I want you to drop, I uh, change the, the word non-profit to actually not-for-profit because you, even in any foundation organization, for it to be sustainable, must make profit. It's going to have an economic yeah. model. So again, to it, yes. again, this whole thing about it's not evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's not evil to you know to 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 to, to uh, commerce is not not even. It, it's something that that is actually uh, can help you know um, people. So before it um, my year ended, actually um, I'll never forget that it's in the in the second semester. Uh, my eldest brother uh, figured in a motorcycle accident. Well, he was already uh, the CFO of, of Inquiry. He was really the one who was going to take take over the business. So when that when that happened, and and um, so my my uh, mother looked and, and and said, who could represent um, our interest in, in the Inquirer? Tessa, in her in her past life, was an interior design, so um, it, she she felt it wasn't suited to her. The brother after. Uh, her, the one, the brother before me is a doctor. He's a cardiologist, um, and he, he, so he also didn't see the f the the fit. I, on the other hand, um, maybe it was the it was the 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 mission more th more than anything that really attracted me. The that, public that, trust that, yeah, aspect the public of the paper, trust, yes. because the mission is 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 we want to be a catalyst of social progress and change. And so that really grabbed me, and and I said, okay. Um, you know, because although the families in invested in, in, in the business, um, my, my mom, you know, as, as chair, doesn't carry 
a practice where it must be a family member that, that, that heads the... In fact, um, prior to, 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 to me, uh, they were all professionals, but oh, except, except the one before me um, was uh, also a stockholder. Um, so I, I, was, I, was, I was worried, though, because I said, you know, I don't have a, a deep, deep uh, experience in, 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 in business. So I said, is there a way that I can train and, and um, see how I, c I could do? So for two years, um, I, I uh, spent time in different uh, departments. You did a rotation yes, and all that. Yes, yeah. And so that was, that was also quite a fantastic experience. Again, maybe, maybe you know, from high school to, to, to college, just the approach of that, you know, when you, when you go into a, to a place, go into a, there must be that, again, that sense of respect and sensitivity. And the immersion also. Yes. So I think when you have it from the approach and, 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 and when you're coming from, from your, your master's program, I think I, when you take a, a student perspective, you're so much more open to learning until um, the president then, I, 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 I owe him, you know, um, a lot of my, my learning from, from him, Ben Pangilinan. You know, one day said, um, told my mom, I, I think she's ready. Um, and uh, when when I when I was named, that was talk about baptism of fire. That was uh, well, at tender Estrada. age of thirty-one, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, you think about nineteen ninety-eight. <laughs> ahead of time, indeed, in, in, in nineteen ninety-eight. So and I was, then I was that, that's the time also we were um, we were uh, negotiating our, our CBA. So it was also my first uh, my first experience um, there. Um, I was also the only woman CEO of a media company um, at that time. You know, young and, 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 and female uh, has, has its pros and cons. So, so that, that's also something I needed to, to learn and, and needed to um, uh, try and, you know, hurdle. What really tested your mettle during this period? Tell, tell us about you know, not just the internal part of absorbing the leadership position, but really managing an external environment as a part of the press. There was a, an, a particular issue that um, was put to my table, and uh, I got a call, and, and um, uh, I was asked that, you know, if the story could, could uh, be, be removed. And, and um, so I talked to the, to the editors, and they said that, um, you know, the so story is solid. And, um, so I got back to, to, to them, and so it'd be a good time for you to, to explain mm -hmm. uh, your, 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 your side. And, and um, uh, well, unfortunately, the, the, the person did not appreciate that, that, that gesture and, and said, uh, well, expect, expect war from, from, from here And on. that, you know, in history, that is the advertising boycott that yeah. the then President Estrada was, you know, uh, was calling for. Tell us about how you held your ground. How did you get? the entire organization behind that yeah. decision? At some point, uh, it was weighing heavy on the business. You know, a lot of people were saying, you know, why don't you just apologize? I said, um, if we apologize, it, it would be a point of no return. We, we, could, we could not, um, you know, sort of like, uh, we, would, we would be in, in fear. Uh, basically and all eyes were on your paper as a bulwark of you know, democracy, so any decision you have, would have made would have really been a bellwether for, for the country as well. So as it was weighing heavy, I decided to have uh, first. It, well, it started with a with a board meeting, and I said, you know, how 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 do you feel? Is this is this something we can carry on? And I'll never forget the words of the treasurer, uh, then Pat Garcia. He said, Sandy, even if we're eight page tabloid, we we are to come out with a paper, and that really, you know, so I you know I I told the the, the team there's going to be no retrenchment no one's going to lose their jobs the, 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 the stockholders are going to take this as, as long as, as as we can and again I shared it even if it if it's down to us and you had higher ideals business. to live up to as well well that's really when the mission was on the on on you know brought down it's not something anymore in a poster when when, when you say you know um, you want to be the newspaper of record that you're a catalyst for social progress and change for us to see that that we'd come together it really solidified you know what what we were doing and, and what the mission was. I think I think it's a misnomer to say that people don't don't read anymore. I think as far as news consumption is concerned, we are consuming news more than any other time.
you've survived one disruption in the late 90s, but now this disruption has a lot to do with technology. Talk to us about how the, the Inquirer is positioning itself to embrace this technology yeah. and, you know, and compete, thrive, and do well, and still commit to your public service. Yeah. We decided to, to, to spin it off because we said that if it was going to be under the same company as the broadsheet, the pace of the broadsheet might continually dominate the you need to form the, independence yes. for it to flourish and then we wanted to see also if, there, if there's if there's partnerships that that we can we can have and if, if you remember for a for a few years there we did partner with another um, TV network and so that experience um, you know sort of like pushed us that um, you know the idea that better to cannibalize yourself than, than someone have else. somebody else do yeah, it for have, you have, have someone else do it for you so what I can say is, is I think the board and the stockholders of Inquirer, thank God, are, are very um, entrepreneurial in, in that sense. Um, when, we were, when we bring ideas to, to, the, to the table, uh, they're very open. Um, there's been, of course, hits, but there's also been misses. Uh, another hit um, was uh, the free paper. We came up with uh, Libre, and at that time, uh, you know, the board were scratching their heads. Wait a minute. We just came out from a from a boycott and you're wanting us to introduce a product that's fully dependent on advertising. Are you crazy, Sandy? Um, and uh, and and so so I, I guess that 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 you you constantly have to to be get yourself at the back. If if you're if if not, you are gonna be the one that's gonna be disrupted. I think starting off way back then really helped us uh, reach you know where we are today where we're very comfortable with the idea that we care less about how you pull us we we, we it, it's important though to us that that it is you know of our of our brand and and um but but to get to get here took a lot of um thawing of 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 of, of feelings tensions and and just um Again, boxes that that people have, have put put you in. Like you have to it, break out from. If you're so. in digital, it, it, you know you're fast and quick, so you don't really do. You know you, that's not really journalism, or you know it's, it's. So it's being able to appreciate what the other does. But tell us about as it applies to the next generation of the Inquirer. How do you create that platform where you have that deliberative aspect here, making sure the organization is behind it, but also embracing all these new risks, challenges, and opportunities to take your leadership and affirm it going forward. So now it's being able to say, how do people like to consume the news? And, and, and you, know, um, so, you know, some people say, oh, you know, what do you do? People are not reading anymore. I said, of course not. I think people are reading more than ever. It's just that in different the forms. Different, yes. yes. I, think, I think it's a misnomer to say that people don't, don't read anymore. I think, I, think, I think as far as news consumption is concerned, we are consuming news more than any other time, more than my parents' time, more than my time. Millennials now are so glued in. And, and, and so once you, you start to, 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 to think of that, then you can try to see what is the type of content that they, they prefer in print, what, what they prefer in, 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 in digital, and so that, that, so that it, it's clear to you. Again, the other, the other thing is, 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 is the business itself, you know, and, and, and it's, it's sustainability and how to be able to, to say that, you know, before great products, you know, would, would be able to get great following. You know, now it's, it's, there's a lot of components that you have to study and, you know, how to deliver. Well, Sandy, part of the leadership of the inquiry is also trying to find a way to do a uh, balance of different media, but also at the same time integrating them together for the consumer and the growing bo body politic. What are the specific plans of the inquiry in that regard? Uh, we've launched uh, last week is, is, is an initiative it's more than an initiative, but but uh, uh, a movement in the Inquirer um, that allows us to be able to to, to use different uh, avenues in engaging um, the public uh, and be able to 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 say you know which which of their in other words their favorite stuff but in, but but delivered in the best way possible. Um, and so we started, we, we got uh, an international consultant. Um, his name is uh, Mario Garcia. Um, and he says, although the, the, a lot of the project really had to do with design, 
um, he really went deeper and, 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 and asked us to actually rethink our processes, rethink the way we do things. Um, and so it, it's actually revolutionized the way we, 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 we do things. We're, we're still at sort of like uh, the start of it. Um, I, I wouldn't even say that this is it. I mean, we really just started it. Um, it was over, you know, 18 months. So it, it's, it's, it's like I gave birth to, you know, three babies already. <laughs> and and um, so it's, so it's, it's, it's going to be a constant uh, look at, at, at what we offer and, and how we can engage the, the public. So we've got new, con new, new content. Um, we've got new um, offerings. We've also introduced a way that um, the community can also contribute and we've called it Citizen Inquirer. Um, through our app, you can, you can uh, uh, contribute to, the, to, the, to any of our platforms, whether it's, in, it's a photo, it's a story, or, or video. Because um, that, that's, 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 that's today, right? The, the, the ability to be able to, to engage, say, to yeah. engage, and be able to say, this is happening in my corner of the world. I need, attention needs to be given. Well, this is the it, rise yeah. of the citizen journalist, right? Correct. So, you know, more of the idea of, of a community and um, really thinking of themselves and ourselves as my inquirer, basically, um, how to be able to, to get everyone in that community. Sandy, I mean, it's tremendous that you shared with us how your journey has shaped others, especially through the inquirer. I appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you very much. And I much. wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. The changing times call for adaptability and innovation to remain viable and relevant. But more importantly, staying true to your values, your role, and mission is what will uplift and sustain an organization. And that is what Sandy Prieto's life tells us simply, clearly, and powerfully. Yeah.